Alfred Lambronmont Weber, who is just such an extraordinary patriot. Let me tell you a little bit about him before I bring him on. Yale Law School graduate, 1967, Fulbright Scholar in Uruguay, futurist at Stanford Research Institute, Menlo Park. He was appointed by Jimmy Carter as the director of the proposed 1977 White House ET communication study. He founded the field of exopolitics in 2000, the science of the relations of intelligent civilizations in the multiverse. He has served as a judge on the Kuala Lumpur War Crimes Tribunal. And most recently, he's integrated his work under the Omniverse book. The Omniverse is the multiverse plus the spiritual universe coming together. Spirit and multiverse. Welcome, Alfred. To the under news on KVMR. Well, thank you. Uh, that is so elegantly you've stated that. That is really amazing. And I, as you were saying that, I sort of got a picture of the omniverse, you know, actually uh, manifesting, and that's how we are in there. Uh, we're now in conversations with some web developers will be launching Omniversity in, in the same way that you have the universe, the university that were chartered to study the universes. Well, now we're launching the Omniversity <laughs> to study um, the, the Omniverse, you know, and it's funny because I spent uh, a long time meeting with various universities uh, trying to get curricula launched in this new multidimensional area, they would go, you know, I'd get approval from the faculty, you know, trying to get it in the political science, trying to get it in the philosophy department, and they'd go, but, 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 yes, but, yes, but, and we'd hit the administrator, they'd go, yes, but, and they, they would all hit the fear factor because when you start studying exosciences, sci sciences, or exopolitics, or the objective study of consciousness after death, the life of the soul, or the scientific study of source, or what we call God, uh, where it's not a matter of faith or belief, but it's a matter of replicable, independent uh, study, well then, uh, uh, you know, current secondary uh, education and post secondary education at the university level, they're gatekeepers, right? Yes, absolutely. And, and imagine they would allow a course like this right now. Right, exactly. So I got turned down, I mean, across the board. And so we had to found, this was back in 2010, 2011, 2012, we had a pilot project called Exo University, which was online for about a semester, couple of semesters. And then now, once the Omniverse came out, because surprisingly, there were two books published in 2014 by uh, two different scientists, uh, Bertolacci, and then myself, and there were two books in 2014, published in different parts of the world, discovering the omniverse, and that's what nature does. They, they, you know, when it when it has to happen, it just happens, and they're, you know, it comes down. And so now we're launching omniversity in the fall of 2018, and we're also going to be launching. It, it'll it'll be like. Uh, like a theme park. It's omniverse.cc. It's like, oh, so you went, it's like a virtual reality to be mm. in the omniverse. So that because 
we're in 3D now. We devolved back down into 3D at the time of the last Mu Mu Atlantis Wars. The, the, these were the wars between the reptilians and the humans, which have been going on since, you know, we had the Draco reptilians attack the humans in Lyra, the Lyra constellation. And then we had the big, uh, you know, just the diaspora of humans throughout the galaxy and the universe. And we humans here on Earth are part of the diaspora of humans from Lyra. And we've been battling out here in this solar system, first of all, we were on Tiamat and Mars, and Tiamat, about 7,000 years ago, there was a huge nuclear war, planetary nuclear war between the humans and the reptilians, and, and the whole planet was destroyed, and is now the asteroid belt. And so then the battle went up back up to Mars. And so then Mars was just, Mars was a verdant planet like Tiamat was and like Earth is. And there was a nuclear war again uh, between the humans and the reptilians. And they made, and that war ended up with Mars becoming an obloid, pumpkin-like planet with uh, no surface vegetation and very thin atmosphere and with reptilians on the surface and with the humans, about a million Mars humans, humans, uh, uh, Homo Martis Terrace, in cities underground. And, and now it's to Earth, and the question is, are we gonna have the nuclear trifecta, whether where the reptilians on Earth, call them the military industrial complex, you know, all those countries that are kind of ruled by the reptilians that have nuclear weapons that are deploying directed energy weapons that haven't signed, that haven't ratified the International Criminal Court Treaty, and we can count them on our hand. The United States, Israel, China, Russia, Iran, and others, those are the ones that have the secret deals with the drug or reptilians that are still into creating a war a world of war, disease, crime, and poverty. And so the issue is, are they going to get and have those souls that are ruling those countries incarnated here again to blow up Earth in a nuclear war in the same way that they have blown up Tiamat, that large human planet, green planet that's now the asteroid belt, that have blown up Mars that was a verdant planet, our nearest neighbor that is now, you know, it does, it's a, it's a, doesn't have any vegetation. And now here, we're at Earth, who's a jewel. And that's what, why when the United States bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, that were religious centers. They had nothing to do whatsoever with war. They were filled with cathedrals, they were the Christian centers of Japan, and they were bombed with the first atomic bombs. And that's why all of galactic governance, they sent all of their extraterrestrial ships here, and they've been here since to make sure that nuclear war does not happen. But we still have 5G and directed energy weapons, and we've called upon everybody, and I say this because it's July 4th, uh, that we're calling for a, a call to action, a special moratorium on July 4th and 5th, and asking everyone to let go of and to turn off their cell phones as a show of solidarity on July 4th and 5th, and every Friday thereafter, it was like casual Fridays at work, to, uh, to, so that we can abort the rollout of 5G cell phones, smartphones, and 5G Internet of Things, which is how this uh, artificial intelligence and dark force aims to depopulate the planet. Uh, and I just finished doing a 
a, uh, uh, a 28-minute documentary and a talk you can see online. There's a secret plan, which is well documented, uh, that calls for the depopulation of the United States from 324 million persons in 2016 to 54 million in 2025 from 19 trillion GDP in uh, 2016 to 981 billion in 2025. And they aim to do it through 5G and directed energy weapons. And we found a solution. So that is part of my message today is as you're listening to this, just Power down your cell phone. If you're listening to it on your cell phone, listen to the rest of this and then power it down. As I was doing the research for this 28 minute documentary, the two weeks prior to the summit, which was June 23rd to 24th, 2018, I actually discontinued my cell phone service. And I feel so good because I'm no longer being attacked by this elect electromagnetic weapon that is being sold to me as a communication device. Yeah, so good for you, Alfred. Wow, that's a big step. Yeah, yeah. And you know something? I feel so good. My wife tells me, I finally got Alfred back, you know? Because <laughs> there are so many different ways that we don't even realize what this 5G and 2, you know, energy is doing to our minds, our brains, our bodies. I mean, there are eight different things. I could tell you what those eight things are, but I've got something much more interesting to talk about. But you can go to our website, uh, newsinsideout.com, and learn about all that other stuff. Uh, and you can, uh, you know, uh, uh, oh, and by the way, I used to pay 120 bucks a month for uh, mobile service. I'm now paying $9 a month for a landline, <laughs> which I'm talking to you on now. And I feel so great because I'm not being bombarded, you know. So it's like, hey, you've got nothing to lose but your chains, your electromagnetic chains, as they say. But as, as we were saying, uh, what I'd like to talk to you about, and this is so exciting because we're going to be leading with it at Omniversity, is... If we could maybe just one, before we get there. Yeah, tell me. But I feel like that is, that's kind of like our solution. If yeah. we could just identify the problem a little bit more clearly, that a lot of people don't know that this planet has, has a really limited freedom. And free will. Oh yeah. And and maybe you could go back to perhaps even to start at the Griotta Treaty, nineteen fifty four. Just briefly, kind of catch us up that we're not we're not a people who are free right now on this planet. Oh boy. What has what has occurred, Alfred? Well, this is this is very very interesting. You you have really you have really brought up some deep topics here, and some deep. Uh, issues on today, July 4th, which uh, can be called Independence Day, but also Interdependence Day, because this is how we realize our interdependent bonds amongst each other. And as a human, as a human community, we really have to come together, because on this planet, there are other non-human actors, namely the Draco reptilians, namely the Anunnaki reptilians, namely the Orion Greys, and it was the Lucifer Rebellion was started in Orion, and then you have the invading, uh, sentient, inorganic, pathogenic, predatory, off-planet artificial intelligence, uh, which is now on the Earth, and is attempting to terraform the Earth from a divine soul planet to an AI-entrained planet 
and to terraform humans into robotoids, into AI robotoids. And that's what the transhumanist agenda is all about. And starting very, very briefly, just this is uh, basic exopolitics. And exopolitics is the study of relations among uh, civilizations, including, uh, you know, intelligent civilizations, uh, not only of human uh, forms, because advanced intelligence can take any, any uh, mammalian, uh, reptilian, avian, or other form, but it can also take an artificial intelligence form. And that's a great danger in our particular universe in which uh, a, an invading artificial intelligence, AI, is now taking over planets and colonizing them and terraforming the planets from a living divine planet into an AI planet. And that planet is no longer uh, a venue for incarnation. And if you go to uh, universebooks.com, you'll be able to access my book, The Dimensional Ecology of the Omniverse. And what you learn there is that, is that uh, it's universe, multiverse, omniverse. And we're, we're now actually uh, souls, uh, which are holographic fragments of source. And the principle of holography is that the whole is contained in each part of the whole. So actually, uh, you and I talking to each other collectively is God talking to God or source talking to source because each of us has a holographic fragment of God or source or whatever you want to call it in inside ourselves in the form of our soul. And the more that we develop that and really uh, nurture it and our guard it and don't let it be stolen or compromised, the more that we manifest the divine within us, which is one of the primary things of the universe. Is universes are machines for soul development. And so our soul really resides in a part of the omniverse uh, called the spiritual dimensions. And the equation uh, as, as Michael so beautifully put it in a very melodic way, I thought, is that omniverse equals multiverse, or the totality of all the universes, plus spiritual dimensions. Although Michael said it a lot more musically and dimensionally and transmitted these beautiful pictures, which I thought were so tremendous. Um, and and uh, uh, however, one of the aspects of this universe that we're in, in which we incarnate uh, for the development of souls, ba basically, I like to think of universes as washing machines. You know, like you have, and, and souls are like the clothes. Yeah. So you, you have like a wash cycle, a rinse cycle, and a spin cycle. And then you're ready to either ascend or they send you back for another cycle. You follow me? Now, now, do you see the cycles as lived experience or are they part of the dimensional densities? Well, they, both, both, both. Like right now, collectively, we're in the earth in what's called third density. In other words, it's time space. We're like in the entry level density of higher intelligence. And we devolved down here as a result of the last war, which was about 12,500 years ago between Mu, which was a continent, a mega continent that's now been rediscovered called Zealandia, which is under New Zealand. And and uh, Atlantis, which roughly covered most of West Africa now, and then the middle of the Atlantic, 
And you can actually see parts of it, like the Sahara was part of it, and the Kalahari Desert is part of it, and both of those were burdened, but they were destroyed in the nuclear wars of the last uh, Mu uh, Atlantis War. And if you go to the Kalahari Desert, we've uh, done interviews with Mel Vey, for example, who is a tremendous researcher. She's uh, uh, a political exile from South Africa, but she's also the public relations spokesperson for the, for the state of good hope, which has emerged in Southern Africa as, the, as uh, South Africa has been taken over by elements of the Vatican, Israel, these are uh, reptilian elements that have come in and turned the African National Congress into uh, what we can call communist, uh, which is really a form of Zionism and racism. And now they're taking over and genociding all the white farmers. So they've turned that into like a dystopia so that uh, the the uh, the truly African down in the southern Africa, uh, King Cornelius of the of the African people there, that every, every of a certain African tribe that everybody on the planet has DNA from that tribe, because we're from that area. They have joined together with the Afrikaners with the Euroconners and with other coloreds who are, I would say that they're of the new species that is now emerging and they've declared a new nation called Good Hope after the Cape of Good Hope. So, so, that, so that the new earth is emerging right in the same space as the old earth. The old earth is still in this duality consciousness of I win, you lose, fighting it out under communism, fascism, capitalism, what's mine is mine. I can go out and, and you know, do you know that Princess Diana on January 15th went, walked through a minefield in, in Angola, Africa, thereby launching the 1997 Ottawa Landmines Treaty to ban all landmines. Now, she was assassinated because of that in August of 1997. The mainstream media says, oh, it's because of her boyfriend and the department store or because of intrigue in the royal family. No, that's not it at all. They did that because she went up against the war industry and, you know, the duality consciousness bankers and and all of that. So they assassinated her in August, just eight months after she started it. So, and that was just to rid the earth of one category of weapons, landmines. And now that, do you know that there are 150 million landmines in the ground? Wow. And that there are 250 million landmines in, in stockpiles now, and that 5 million landmines are made every day? Does that sound like a planet that, that wants to make peace with each other? No. That's a planet where the countries that have not signed the, land, the Ottawa Landmines Treaty, which are the same countries that have nuclear weapons, which are the same countries that have not, not ratified the International Criminal Court Treaty banning war crimes, genocide, and crimes against humanity, which you can count on one hand, which are the United States, Israel, China, Russia, Iran, and just a handful of others, okay? Uh, uh, that's, that's what's going on here. And those are the countries that are run by reptilians. Do you know that there are huge reptilian bases for generations right under India? China, the dragon, they're run by dragon families. What's a dragon? That's a reptilian, right? I mean... When you, when you say a reptilian, I, could we clarify that? Is that a, a reptilian species? 
soul and a human body, or is this okay, another you, form of an entity that you're describing? Okay, all of the above. You can have a reptilian soul in a human body, and Americans chose to elect one of these to be their POTUS. And here on July 4th, 2018, you have a POTUS who, who is a reptilian soul in a human body, and that's not mine. Gary Carlson, I interviewed him, and that's what he found, and he's very objective. Yeah. He, he, he can really call, call it out, and that's what's slowing down the ascension, okay? That, 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 we, that the United States has a POTUS who has a reptilian soul in a human body. Now, it's not a Draco reptilian, but still, it's that reptilian consciousness which is duality consciousness, which is I win, you lose, rather than the mammalian human soul, which is more into unity consciousness, which is we are one, okay? And, and empathy seems to be a key marker. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, that, so we're in third density. Now, third density isn't only one thing. Let's say that if you're in the washing machine of third density, you can be toward the bottom, like 3.1, or you can be toward the top, like 3.9 or 3.95. So then you're going to go through the portal into uh, fourth and fifth density, four and fourth and fifth density. Time, you have less the influence of time, more into unity consciousness, and when we move into fifth density here on Earth, that's the new Earth. That's where we were in the Garden of Eden. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. Now, the, the issue is, and this is what all the research shows, is that the portal opening up to the new Earth, the portal opens in 2018 to 2025. You follow me? So that portal is opening up right now. And so people that are in that mode of unity consciousness are upright in the portal, but then you have the whole gamut of the rate of the rest of the seven billion, plus their leaders who may have reptilian souls or not, or they may have who knows what. We could get into that very deep. But that's the whole tug of war that's going on now. Plus, they may be incarnates from Tiamat and from Mars and for those nuclear wars that blew up those planets, they're unconscious of it. And so we have to bring them up to more enlightenment so they don't act out what they did in Tiamat. Why? Because in Tiamat, two billion souls were there for 100,000 years. They were stuck in this ball of fear, these souls. They couldn't reincarnate. Finally, the universe governance, and we know this from the law from the rod root that told us in the law of one. And we interviewed the scribe, who actually scribe, wrote down the entire law of one from the channel. Yeah, and, Jim, Jim, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so then, then, uh, uh, you know, and, and so. After the 100,000 years, the entire 2 billion souls from the war in Tiamat are now reincarnating on Earth and going out of that trauma. But we don't want to trigger them again to think that, oh my God, we're here on Earth and they're going to trigger the nuclear war again. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So that's, well, that's what was acted out in this latest Kim Donald drama. You see what I'm saying? That, that is, hey, we're doing Tiamat again. That was only 700,000 years ago. That's nothing in soul time. We're doing uh, 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 Mars again. That was, you know, that's nothing. And, and, here, and here we are again. Are these the same incarnates that did it there? How do we open their eyes? How do we get to their consciousness? Please, please. I just spoke to Dr. Carol Rosin. Two days ago, she was invited to Russia two months ago. She went in there and met at the circles right next. I mean, Vladimir Putin was in the next room. They were all saying they're so di disappointed in Donald because they don't know how to get to him. He doesn't get it. Like, 
they put him on the half shekel in Israel, uh, you know, and that he, he, ha he doesn't get it that everybody's there and we're all going through the portal that it's not I win, you lose. It's everybody wins. You get it? Yes. And, and so why did he come up to Canada and bash everybody, go down to Mexico, bash everybody? We knew in 1982 when I was in Mexico as a journalist, credential to cover the visit of Jimmy Carter, the Pope, and President Giscard de Stang of France, that in 1982, this book was published there called La Mujer Dormida de la Luz, Sleeping Woman Will Give Birth, that sleeping woman, the female volcano spirit, Ista Siwato, next to Popocatapetl, that evil men will arise in the United States and only the good ones will should be allowed from the United States coming into Mexico fleeing, that the wall is not to keep Mexicans out, it's to keep Americans in from escaping to Mexico when they start the great depopulation with the 5G and the DEWs. I gave this lecture in Spanish in Tijuana just at a conference a short while ago and everybody grokked it. You go to the other side of the border, everybody say, oh, keep out the Mexico. The wall is to keep Americans in. Everybody in Mexico and South America knows what's going on. Everybody knows it. Everybody's awake. America, you've got to wake up. You're being depopulated. Loren and Murray and I did interviews, which you can get at newsinsideout.com, which you can get on Exopolitics TV. Just go to YouTube. And this goes back to March 11, 2011, which is Fukushima, which Barack Obama Satoro Soibarka, who's a lifelong CIA agent and depopulation agent, was in on the planning of, uh, and it was an Israeli false flag operation, and that whole thing was to depopulate to put radiation in the atmospheric column in the oceans and to steer the radiation over the United States where the radiation now levels are, and you can, this is Bob Nichols who does it for veterans today. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the radiation levels in major US cities are 250 times the mandatory evacuation levels. They're, they, are, they are exterminating the American population right now, and Facebook will not allow, they will not allow Veterans Today's U URLs to be posted in Facebook. Why? Because Facebook is CIA, US Army, and they're in charge of the depopulation. The enemy isn't the rest of the world, the enemy is the 324 million American population. That's the enemy. That's the enemy. Why? Because it's the Antarctica Nazis who won the war that are in charge of depopulating and getting rid of all the advanced human souls that have incarnated into the United States but are now being bamboozled and brainwashed by MK Ultra and chemtrails. Okay? Now, that's a mouthful, but it's coming through on July 4th, 2018, which is Independence Day, and in my alma mater, which, you know, I mean, it was for a reason that I incarnated in Yale. My father went to Yale at the same time that George H.W. Bush did, and my ancestors helped found the Yale School of Divinity. So there's light workers they incarnated in there at the same time as the devil, but Yale is a dark place. I will tell you why. Because Skull and Bones, the myth is that Skull and Bones was founded in 1832 as a chapter of a German secret society, University of Secret Society. The truth is, Yale was founded in 1776. Okay. Okay, as, as the second chapter of the Bavarian Illuminati under Adam Weisskopf, its mission was to sabotage July 4th, 1776 Declaration of Independence and the American Revolution 
by turning it satanic. Yes. That was it. So here we are. So many years later, July 4th, 2018, from July 4th, 1776, hey man, I faced all those guys off at Yale. Do you know that Cheney was in my year? He flunked out sophomore year. You know that George W. Bush was just a few years behind me? I found both of those guys guilty war crimes, quote unquote war crimes tribunals. So it can be done. It can be done. Light workers can do it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I really yeah. do. I want to ask you a question. Is, is it true that Dick Cheney was the director of the Mars Development Corporation? Yeah. Dick Cheney was the CEO of the Mars Colony Corporation. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because he was what we used to call in Cuba, David Rockefeller's Pachanchan. David Rockefeller's right-hand man. David Rockefeller's go-fitter, David Rockefeller's hit man. That's what Dick Cheney become. Why? Because he, he flunked out my sophomore year in my class. Get it? <laughs> you get it? Listen, I'm telling you, it's just an inside club, man. It's the light forces against the dark forces. And Rockefeller, do you know that in... In 1966, my second year at Yale Law School, Governor Winthrop Rockefeller gangstalked me in the faculty lounge of the Yale Law School. And that's because DARPA CIA time travel, secret time travel program had time travel my book, Exopolitics from 2005 when it was published back to 1971 and then back to 1966 and giving it to Governor uh, Winthrop Rockefeller. So that the rock, because all of the time travel experiments were carried out on Exxon company camp campuses, Exxon Corporation campuses by the CIA, because the CIA is just the Rockefeller's private research thing. So they run their part of what I call the chronogarchy, which is a secret time travel go government. And Bill and Hillary Clinton, who are their, you know, kind of their progeny, some say that Governor Winthrop Rockefeller is Bill Clinton's father. Other people say it was the Roosevelt's. But they were headed to matriculate into Yale Law School. That was in 1966, just a few years later in 1971. Uh, and Andy Bishago's father job was to go in summer camp between Hillary Clinton's uh, year, senior Wes Wellesley and her matriculation into Yale Law School and tell her that she's going to meet Bill Clinton in the Yale Law School library and he's going to be her significant other. All of that is time travel scaping, okay? I met with uh, the uh, DARPA CIA time travel. Is this Project Pegasus? Yeah, yeah, I met with them in, in 1971. And I was then general counsel of the uh, New York City Environmental Protection Administration. And part of my job was to do public lectures on protection of the environment. And one day I got an invitation from a group that was, you know, they were, so I said, yeah, I'll go. And when they showed up, it was this guy in a suit, you know, he was like a suit. And, and it was different from the students and housewives that are normally there. So I went with them, we, we traveled for a few hours and we came to a nondescript office building on a second floor. There were about 50 other suits in there. Some of them with just, you know, like NASA-like white shirts and ties with pencils, you know, those pencil holders they, they wear. And so I gave them my, now, mind you, I had been in ba both Batista's jails and Castro's jail during the Cuban Revolution, so I had developed double vision. You follow what I mean? Yeah. I could yeah. tell, like, who spooks, who's not spooks. And I knew that this was not an environmental group. So I just gave them a rousing environmental talk. And I just, you, you know, just, I said, I'm in some kind of weird shit here. 
a lot of them were doing cognitive dissonance, dissonance on me, like smirking at me and stuff and trying to get me off my game, but I just like went right through them, right? And then they gave me a standing ovation at the end and gave me a mug that said Delaware Valley Industrial Engineering Association. That was to play into the fact that I had a Bachelor of Science degree from Yale University in Industrial Administration Honors. Yeah. It's all psyops, man. These, our governments are just psyops. They just prey on citizens like us while we pray, P-R-A-Y, to gods and to yeah. government officials and to judges to do shit. And they're Satanists or they're manipulators. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, they, like they don't use the technology honestly. It's not like in the movies where they have honest scientists, but this is the end of it. That chapter's over. Yes. Okay? You, you mentioned Andrew Pashago. I, I find him what an interesting character. My yeah, opinion. yeah. Now, I want to say this right now. Andy was hit with directed energy weapons in the spring of spring summer of 2016 by the US government under direct orders of President Barack Obama. As was I. I was hit on July 30th. 2016, we directed energy weapons under the direct orders of Barack Obama coming directly from the Oval Office. As a result of that, I've lost direct vision in my right eye. I've been through multiple ophthalmologists. We have the best medical system in Canada, but I have no direct vision in my right eye. And that is as a result of the US Armed Forces attacking me. Uh, as part of the 2016 political campaign, they've attacked Andy Bishago. He is legally blind now. He just came back from a 10-day trip oh, to China and Malaysia, where they're giving him stem cell therapy, advanced stem cell therapy in his eyes to try and restore his vision. That was done at the direct orders of Barack Obama. And the U.S. Army did that. And it was to, and because he was running for president, and Barack, and because I had been a judge, and I had just found uh, 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 George W. Bush, Richard B. Cheney, and their entire cabinet guilty of war crimes for conspiring to evade the Geneva Conventions in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Guantanamo, Cuba, based on extensive evidence, including witnesses and documents. Now, the thing is this, that. Uh, uh, that Barack Obama was afraid that that Andy, uh, see, Andy and Barack Obama were roommates in the Mars Jump Room training, and and Andy. He mentioned that in the early eighties he was on Mars with Barry Satoro. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so n number one, Andy could out. Barack Obama, and we had Bernard Mendez here in Vancouver at Exo University. Bernard Mendez was a, an advisor to President Nixon. Watergate was really about the CIA taking out Nixon because Nixon objected to the CIA using time travel for money laundering. Okay? They used time travel and tell, they used CIA teleportation for money laundering. That's what they were using it for. And Nixon was going to shut it down and blow the whistle. And that's why they took him out. The Rockefellers were using it for money laundering. And that's why they took Nixon out. And they put Nelson Rockefeller in as vice president. And Ford, the author of the single bullet theory, a disgrace to Yale Law School, my alma mater, in as president. And Jimmy Carter, who Andy Bishago, myself, and Jimmy Carter are ET abductees of the same group of short grades. Uh, this is Jimmy Carter in 69, myself in 73, and Andy Bishago in 75. We're all abducted by the same group of short grades. You can go online to Exopolitics TV, to News Inside Out, it's completely documented. We presented it in uh, in uh, in 2018 in in April, and and 
uh, in a scholarly conference in Washington State. And, and the ETs aboard there showed pictures of myself being abducted so that, so that there would be a witness to it. So I'm not, you know, blowing steam or making it up. And that's how aboard the, the abductions is how uh, myself being appointed the director of the, uh, of the Jimmy Carter White House Extraterrestrial Communication Study was coordinated and planned. That's how, how that happened, that in, in uh, January 1973, I mean, I, I was an environmental lawyer, I didn't know anything, and then uh, just a, a few years later, in, in January of, in 1977, I was director of the White House Extraterrestrial Communication Study. It all happened because of the ET abductions. They do abductions. You become, you you ascend. You go into, you know. That's why if you go to positivefuture.com.info, positivefuture.info, I am putting forth uh, my candidacy uh, to be Earth's representative to the uh, galactic governance body, to the uh, galactic federation. And I lay out my platform there. So go to positivefuture.info, okay? I, I believe that I'm in training. Positivefuture.info. A lot of people aren't aware that there is a, a galactic council yeah. actually looking into these matters and are actually very concerned about what's going on here on Earth. Yeah, be, because the, the New World Order and reptilian and hybrid reptilian, and I've got to call it out, the Israel-based, Hybrid reptilians, which are really Babylonian Satanists, are the ones who want to blow up the planet. Israel, do you know what Israel's nu nuclear policy is? They call it the Samson option. If anybody threatens the existence of, of Israel, they're going to use their, their nuclear weapons, which they got through blackmail, to blow up the planet. Oh, that's what they did in Tiamat. That's what they did in Mars. And guess what? We manipulated it, so that's what we're going to do on Earth. So, the reptilians, the Israelis, the Babylonian Satanists are Anunnaki reptilian hybrids. They bring with them the same DNA and soul consciousness that blew up Tiamat into the asteroids, that blew up Mars into an obloid bare planet, and that want to blow up Earth using the Samson option as their Hobson's choice, okay? That's what they're up to. Look, I went to Yale Law School with a, a class of, of, of many enlightened Zionists. Their parents were all exported from Russia uh, as Jews uh, and brought to America so as to, as part of the takeover of America uh, to make it into the world Zionist planet. Well, that ain't happening because this is not a reptilian planet. It's a human planet and we're going to have to live with it and we're going to have to make the compromises and we're not going to have a blow up of earth. We're going to have a nice happy society because I'm a member of Yale Law School of uh, class of 67, and I do my own. Because, besides, they call the Cubans the Jews of the Caribbean, so they're not going to push us humans around anymore. Uh, and I'm talking directly to them, to the Netanyahu's of the world, and to the Sanhedrin, and to the protocols of the Sanhedrin, who are behind the plan to depopulate America from 324 million down to 54 million in, in 2025. And we've got chapter and verse published at newsinsideout.com. So I'm sorry. Yes, you're listening to Alfred Lambermont Weber on Under News, KBMR, Michael Axel. And we're in our last five minutes with Alfred. This has just been a, a tremendous interview, Alfred. Thank you so much for uh, just all this information. Um, I want to just let everybody know that 
newsinsideout.com offers a lot of this information. You have webinars that are available with the top people in the exopolitics field that you're constantly interviewing. Books, research projects. Do you feel that we need to abrogate the treaties with the Greys for us to have peace on this planet? That is a key. And one of the key webinars I'd like to send you to is with Laura Eisenhower. She is the great granddaughter, the great, great as a great person, the great granddaughter of President Dwight Eisenhower, uh, with whose uh, Secretary of Labor I met, actually, when I was a junior at Georgetown Preparatory School in Washington, D.C. He had signed, President Eisenhower signed in 1954, a secret treaty with the Draco reptilians, the Orion Greys, and the Anunnaki reptilians, making them the sole military and commercial partner of the United States in, on the planet, in this solar system, and throughout the galaxy, and functionally throughout the universe. This has made far-reaching consequences for the human race and for this neighborhood, which are detrimental. And the detrimental part are, number one, this has made, uh, uh, made this a, a pedocriminal planet. Uh, there are quotas for uh, children. There are quotas for tin, tin meat of human baby meat, which must be delivered. Uh, there are quota for humans, which must be delivered to the Dracos. Uh, the U.S. police at the local municipal state and other levels stand down. The FBI stands down on missing children. If you go, for example, to the West Virginia State Police, its police insignia is based upon the pedocriminal and pedophilia insignia. This is all because of the Dracos. And so that the United States and the world have surrendered their power to the reptilian empire, which treat the humans as cattle, and this is a feeding farm. That is a, that is a, that is a total sellout of the human race. And so uh, we called upon, and we have many signatures at the petition online. Go to newsinsideout.com. And uh, the great-granddaughter of uh, President Eisenhower is willing to bring our proposal, it's called Abricate This, into the Oval Office to POTUS, and, and, and POTUS has said that he can abrogate everything from, you know, the uh, Global Warming Treaty, well, abrogate the Griata Treaty, 1954 Griata Treaty, with the reptilians that'll abrogate the 1933 treaty that Roosevelt signed with the Dracos down in Balboa, Park, Panama, aboard with the Orion Grays fronting for the Dracos, uh, aboard a U.S. battleship uh, that, you know, Hitler and the Nazis signed another one in 37 that'll abrogate the Tau 9 treaty that Bush won, H.W. Bush signed. My father's at Yale at the same time. You know, those Bushes that just, Hey, I'm not going to talk politics. But look, they're over. The time is over. Okay? Over. So we humans are up now. So the time is over. Yeah, basta. Se acabó. See, Fidel Castro, he used to come to my grandmother's house for dinner on Sundays. He used to play basketball. My uncle Albert, he was on the same basketball team. Ello, el tiempo ha acabado. That's the end of that line. That's the end of the popes. It's the end of the, all, yeah. all, all those people. It's the end. It's like, oh, yeah. What a great way to close our program today. On that final note, Alfred, um, thank you so much, Alfred Lambremont Weber, founder of ExoPolitics, true patriot for this planet. Alfred, thank you once again for coming on to KVMR on July 4th. 
and, and joining us on this special day as we say goodbye to Alfred. We'll be moving into programming at the one o'clock hour for July 4th. We have Ron Avanzino coming in for a swing session from two to four today.